Yeah, so there we go. I, see, I never they usually do. Testing, one, two, three. Testing. One, two, three. We're good, boss. Oh, thank you. Thank you, honey. I appreciate Prosperity is mine.
Good morning, everyone. Oh, how about this beautiful sunny day? Let's go and let's everybody stand and let's do our welcome song. Hey, Sherry, there's a, a bongo drum over there. If you ever wanted to drum with us, you could. See me either. This is your name for them either. Wilbur and Norval had a dream. Nothing is impossible. Imagine if a man took me. Nothing is impossible. People, it can't be done. Man's not meant to run. Their little dream changed everything. They dared to touch the sky. There's a place inside of you where nothing is impossible. Oh, the great things you will do, nothing is impossible. You were born into this world. Everything you need. Hold on to your heart. The magic starts the moment you believe. When you go back, That always gets me going. And I know that everybody knows I struggle with the clapping thing. So Sherry, thank you for saying the same thing to me because I also come from a musical background. It makes me go, why can't they do this? And and usually I watch um, Sue Nevola in the back or off to the side doing it. And Julie, today I just went, I'm going like, I can do this. Did you see me tip my foot? Anyway, I've digressed. Let's welcome Cindy. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, we just show that we have a lot of fun here, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what counts. That's what counts is we all enjoy being here. We all enjoy loving God and people in general. And we are an awesome community. So we welcome everyone that's here for the first time, whether it's be on internet virtually or here in the building, as well as everybody that's here on a fairly regular basis or as you can make it. So we do um, subscribe to the five basic principles of unity uh, set up in Lee's Summit. If you'd like to get more information on that, please pretty much see any one of us and hopefully we can guide you in the right place or the website. Oh, and we take a deep breath and join together in the statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good omnipotence. And our affirmation for our community, we thank you, God, that we have come to join this place to release the past, celebrate the present, and embrace the future in love, peace, harmony, and prosperity. And our congregational affirmation that says who we are as a community. We at the Unity Center are a loving, diverse, inclusive spiritual community who come together to demonstrate, live the teachings of Jesus Christ by listening, learning, 
and empowering ourselves and others. Okay. And one of the basic tenets that we work on is the power of prayer. Um, and so we do that in several ways in this community. We have a prayer box in the corner, at which time I, as the chaplain, will be there after the service if you'd like some individual prayer as well. Uh, kind of put the purple, I'm not putting purple on with gold today, so you'll know I'm over there. I appreciate that. We do, on Thursday, we have Silent Unity Prayer, which we'll talk about again in our announcements, um, where we pray with Unity Village. Uh, we also pray, try to pray at about 9.30, 45 in the library. We do the same kind of uh, prayer, and we have our prayers during the service. So if anyone has a prayer request, we pray affirmatively. We do not pray for the negative piece of it, which Reverend Patty will work on a little bit later with us. We pray for the desired outcome. So anyone that might have a prayer request, we'll take that. Yes, Susan. Monty? She's flying to Chile to be with her sister who's passing away. So support that sister. Linda. For my brother Tim, for Tom, tomorrow, the perfect outcome is to go through a little cathedral. Home and healing. Okay. Yes. Jean recovering with a trauma from dog. Okay. Are we praying for the dog as well? Okay. Oh, health. Okay. Yes, Denise. Terry and Rod healing. <clears throat> And for healing. Andy. Norma, Dick, and Jen. And for healing. And Sandy on the other side. Okay, peaceful support and transition. Sorry, it was for Pastor Marie. Okay. Wait a minute. Marie? Okay. Apologize, I was starting to think of going a different direction that I didn't know about. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Marriage direction for and peace for RNL. Okay. Any others? Okay. I'm going to add my dad Jim to that as he's getting a consult for some surgery. to restore his, his eyesight. Susan. Jerry for healing. All right. We got, we got 
put lots of healing energy around your folks. All right, are we, I don't see any other hands. If somebody does, you gotta speak. <laughs> okay. We take a deep breath and affirm, first of all, and, and be in gratitude that all of these prayer requests have already been answered. We thank you, God, that you know our hearts, you know our thoughts in all of this. We resist and look for your guidance. We resist going toward the ailments and the issues that are going on and instead affirm that all of this will be peaceful, wonderful ease going forward. We especially take into prayer and affirm healing for Mati uh, going to Chile and the peaceful transition of her sister, Linda's brother, Tim, for calm and healing. For Jean, who's recovering from the trauma with her dog, we know that there is ultimate health for both of them because there is only health, all is good. We know we do not inherit any sickness in all of these requests for healing and therefore there is no sickness. We pray for Terry and Rod and affirm their healing as well. And Ken and Norma and Dick and Jen. We support the peaceful transition of Pastor Mary and all those who love and continue to love her. And all that is good in all of the words that have been expressed throughout her ministry that will continue to be spread to all those who know her. We support marriages at all levels and intimate and even non-intimate relationships as in friends, family. We look for direction and peaceful relationships in all things in all of those relationships, especially for R and L with their marriage. And we know that there is only peace in all those relationships and it's how we perceive things. So we ask for clear mind in all of those. Uh, we take into consideration Jim's consult for surgery and know that it will be as it is supposed to be. And all will be in divine order as that continues. And the one more knowledge that we know that Jerry also will be healed. We affirm that all of the finances that we put toward this community will, will be used to the best and greatest good, both in and out of this building. We affirm that the parking lot will receive the correct and right contractor when it needs to happen. And that the right and divine led minister will be here soon to lead us to whatever the next chapter may be as we move forward. We know that all this is so through the loving and divine name and nature of Jesus the Christ. And so it is, amen. And Lynn is going to come up and read the daily word. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Daily word is comfort. I find comfort in expressions of love. Speaking the words, I love you, provides comfort for an aching heart and peace in times of uncertainty. Today, I open my heart to these loving expressions as a soothing balm for distress or grief. When I am concerned about another, love centers me in the truth that all is in divine order, no matter how circumstances appear. I unfold the people I care about in a sphere of love, encircling them in peace and protection. When I am troubled, I find comfort in others' loving words. I surround myself with those who offer solace in my time of need. I find encouragement in their kindness and compassion. As we share ourselves in kind and loving ways, we hearten spirits and bolster faith, 
giving comfort to ourselves and others. Comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. 2 Thessalonians 2.17. And now we welcome Sherry Hansen and her beautiful ukulele and voice to uh, give us some music, please. Good to be with here with you all as usual. Um, I don't know what the theme is, so. I'm gonna sort of lay down a little foundation for that with the song. <clears throat> When I reach the place I'm going. I will surely know my way, and I will turn, look inside me, bid farewell. Every life begins with darkness every flower just wants to see and with the sun and when to test us we are bound to be released i will fly Beyond this valley, I will open up the gate. And when I reach the place I'm going, I will surely, I will surely. Oh, my we have hands to hold our sorrow, and we have tears to heal the pain. And though I Ask many questions on your lips. I hear my name. I was born without whisper. I was born beneath the rain. But when I read, that place I'm going, I will surely find I will surely know my way. Every night. Begins with darkness. Every flower just wants to see. And with the sun, and when to test us, we are bound, we are bound to be released. I was born. Without a whisper, I was born beneath the rain. But when I reach 
Thank you, Sherry. That was gorgeous. Okay. We know that Reverend Patty Pipia comes up from Illinois and is bringing us right back to basics on unity. We're going back to lessons in truth on denials and affirmations with her lesson today of releasing and affirming. Reverend Patty. Good morning, everybody. It's so great to be back here. It really is. So, wow, well, good. So buckle up, here we go, all right? God and I are getting to work here, all right? And there's one thing that I have to say that I think I don't hear often in unity as much as I did when I started in 1980. I was 12. <laughs> But anyways, is that life is consciousness. Life is consciousness. What we're experiencing in our life, we signed up for. We signed up for, and we helped to create it so that we can learn our lessons, right? And we are here to share God's love and be the spirit of God in manifestation, all right? So we've talked about where we were created twice in the Bible. The first time was when God um, breathed, in, blah, 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 I'm talking in tongues already, I'm, I'm, the fire's getting up in there. First time we were created, we were created in the image and likeness of God. And God is not a human being. For those of you who think that God is a human being or in shape of a human form, you are absolutely positively wrong. You have limited your God if you did that. And you have also limited yourself and knowing about the power of God that is within you and within me and within everybody. The second time we were created was when God breathed into the nostrils of man and manifestation took on form. That means God gave us this body to house the spirits. This is why in the Bible, it's, the body is known as the temple of a living God. That's what Jesus refers to it as. And how are we treating our temple? How are we thinking about our temple? How are we thinking about our lives? How are we thinking about other people? Life is consciousness, and that's about what we're thinking, what we're speaking, what we're believing to be true about us. And we have a lot of things that we believe in about ourselves that are not true. There is only, here's another awakening, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore taught, there is only one real power. That real power is God. God is energy. It's a creative force that's always creating. And how does it create? It's through us. 
What are we thinking? What are we feeling? What are we believing in in ourselves is creating an energy field, a vibration that goes out and we begin to create. Then you want to know, oh my God, why is this garbage happening to me? Well, why don't you take a reflection and inventory on what you've been thinking about or what you've been believing all of your life. Now, when we get sick, here's a perfect example. Oh, you know, this is happening to me when people say, you know, how you do? Well, you know, I got this and I got that. I just got over the flu, all this negativity, right? We got to knock it off. We can say my body had an experience of unhealthiness, but the spirit of God is whole and perfect in every single way. So when we're sick or we're going through stuff in our life, instead of focusing on the, the ugliness or the darkness or the appearance of things, we need to refocus ourselves to the spirit of God within us and say that the spirit of God is healthy, whole, and complete in me, and my body is now vibrating that wholeness and completeness. That's called an affirmation. A denial is not saying, oh, let's not look at it. No, no, no. It's about releasing. I now release and let go of all my aches and pains. I now release and let go of COVID out of my body. I now release and let go of the cancer that might be my body might be experiencing because the spirit of God is stronger, is stronger than any disease. It is the most powerful spirit that lives. Everything else is craziness. It's negativity. We don't need that. That's not the truth that's going to set us free. Now, is there anybody in here that wouldn't like to be expressing more of their spiritual self? Yeah, we all want to be acting more spiritual. Well, we have to shift our thinking. We have to have paradigm shifts in our lives. And we have to take an inventory of what we're thinking. What are we believing about ourselves? How many of us have that attitude? I'm not good enough. I've battled with that thing all my life. I'm, I've, I've grown through a lot of it, but I can stand and look in the mirror now today and say, I love you, Patty, just for who you are today. Yeah, maybe that I'm not good enough speech comes up from within me and I have to tell myself that is not true. That is not true about me. I am good enough because I am a child of God and I am a divine heir to that kingdom and I'm claiming it. So Charles and Myrtle Fillmore worked with denials and affirmations a lot. How much do we hear about that in unity now? This is out of the basic book next to the Bible in unity. Lessons in truth, denials and affirmations. From the standpoint of unity teachings, denial is the removal of erroneous negative factors that from the area of mind called conscious accepted beliefs. Now we accepted a lot of beliefs when we were growing up about, you know, as kids, how many of said, oh, that's not good enough. Oh, you can do better. You know, you're always, uh, you know, mom and dad are always pushing you to the limit. But we are good enough and we always can excel in our spiritual nature. You know, denials work because it's the mind of law action. All right. What we're thinking can manifest. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. It's one of our major beliefs in this system. And my suggestion is, is that we should have these up here every single Sunday. The major belief systems of unity. That God is the one and only real power in this universe. We need to bang it into our consciousness. Because when we do see tragedy, we do, we can have compassion, we can have empathy, we can feel sadness, we can, you know, you know, pray. But at the core of it, God is still present. God is still present. 
God's energy is within that person, within that animal, within ourselves, within that circumstance. But are we calling it forth? Are we calling God is he present? God is present. God is working in and through this situation. God is working in and through me. I'm always screaming at God when I've lost it. You know, help me, God, help me. I don't understand. And then a thought of truth comes into my mind. And I start focusing on that. So what are you doing to help yourself to be, to develop your spiritual self? We're all concerned about climbing the ladder of success in life. Business-wise, materialistic-wise, but how many of us are focused on the ladder of success as a spiritual being? That should be our top priority in our lives. Because if we have that as our top priority, all the other good stuff's going to come. All the other good stuff's going to come. Because you're vibrating at a speed and at a vibration that is all God. That's why prayer and affirmation is really wonderful. You know, Jesus, he says, let me teach you to pray. Pray like this. The Lord's prayer are all statements of affirmation of truth. Of truth. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So, you know, Jesus teaches us that he was the means by which we can reach God. And it's not him personally. It was his consciousness, the spirit of God in him. Because he came to show us the way. Was he not known as the way shower? Yeah. Yeah. Are we doing the things that Jesus did? We can, yeah, sometimes. And sometimes we're not. And that's the time that we have to look at ourselves and say, God, you know, I'll give you a perfect example. I got an issue with some leakage in my basement. So I'm outside. We had these, you know, massive rainstorms and you know, the ground in my backyard, I think I told you, you know, it fills up with water so much that I could put koi fish in my backyard and just start a new thing. But the dogs would not appreciate sharing their yard with the dog, I mean, with the koi fish. But anyways, so I'm out there digging and cussing like a sailor, okay? I still cuss and I'm proud of it. So I try to cut back. And I, you know, and a neighbor comes by. She's trying to be nice. Hi, Patty, what are you doing? I'm digging. Oh, what's wrong? And I just wanted to turn around and say, what are you thinking wrong? I'm out here with boots on and digging a trench to, you know, have the water move away from the house. So she's trying to be nice, and I am mean. I am mean. That barroom girl was out because she did not want to be out there digging ditches or trains. Yeah, and it was so warm, too. So, but anyways, I have to go and apologize to her the next time I see her go down to her house and apologize that, you know, for being the wicked witch. But, you know, I have to admit I did something wrong. You know, are we ready to say, God, I could have handled that better? You know, there's times that we have to go and make amends or, you know, make peace. Okay. And that's denying the denial part. It's releasing and letting go of the negative energy, you know, because I could carry that around for the rest of my life about being mean to her because I'm just that much of a sensitive soul. You know, I wouldn't forgive myself for it. Let me put it that way. And I have to forgive myself so I don't carry that heavy energy that covers up my light. So I have to go to Renee and say, hey, I'm really sorry for the way I talked, you know, and that, in fact, she even said, you know, well, you're not in a very talkative mood. 
And I thought to myself, would you be if you're out here doing this? You know, I'm having these thought patterns go through my head. So I really have to do, you know, change that, you know, make peace with it. Make peace with it. And that's letting, that's the denial part of our lives. Letting it go. Stop being so hard on yourself. You know, yeah, we could have done better. But in that moment, if we could have done better, we would have done better. That's the reality. That's the truth that's going to set us free. We can't change the past, folks. You know, if you're having challenges in your relationship, you know, ask God for the guidance and direction. Say, you know, God, first of all, do the release. God, help me to release and let go of this, this anger, this uh, misunderstanding, whatever it is in my heart that is so heavy and wearing me down because it does suck the energy out of you. And you know it when you're angry or mad with somebody to release that and to let that go and say, God, guide me and direct me with the right words and the right behavior to, to become at peace with this. What can I be from this situation? How can I be a better person from this situation? Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus is known for his great I am's. I am is our spiritual identity. We do not want to attach anything negative to I am. We want to add, because that is our most creative mantra for us to create. I am healthy, whole, and complete. I am the resurrection and the light. I am the light of the world. God is guiding me and directing me and inspiring me. We do not want to say, I am sick. I, I am, you know, um, weak. Myrtle's thought, one more. This whole unity movement came about because of Myrtle's consciousness in prayer and affirming for two years straight, she healed, she healed herself of TB. But it was every day, two hours in prayer and meditation, affirming her health and wholeness. You know, how can we build our consciousness? This is what I'm asking you. How can we build our consciousness in God? We want a God consciousness. We want so much God in our conscious mind that these little negative thoughts don't have a chance of squeaking in. Does that make sense? Again, it goes back about your mind being in the garden. You know, the garden is having all these beautiful thoughts about God and that God is working in our life. You know, sometimes people go around, why me, God? Why me, God? Well, why not you? You know, obviously you have something to learn here. Obviously there's something for us to grow from. There's a weed that needs to be pulled out. Get to the root of your problem. Get to the root of your issue. You know, don't say you drink too much when you know you're an alcoholic. Don't say, oh, I just go and gamble at the track. But, you know, but you don't tell people that you put your whole paycheck into it. You know what? You have an addiction. Admit that you have an addiction. Do something to change it. You know, I love in AA that they say when nothing changes, nothing changes. So if you're getting the same results over and over again, well, nothing changes, nothing changes. You know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. You all know that. So you got to let go. You have to create the vacuum for God to come in, for you to fill up that space with God thoughts. You know, we don't, our bodies die, but we do not die. Let me say that. Okay? Our body again, is a temporary vehicle for us to express the spirit of God through, to create more God. God is very curious. That's why he created us. He wants us to go out there. She wants us to go out there and just create more God. Good, orderly direction. God's God. Good, orderly direction. It's an energy. An energy of creative thought. 
So how creative is your mind today? Affirm the truth and the truth shall set you free. How many of you have unity books at home that you've read? Good. Keep reading them. That builds your consciousness. That builds your consciousness. And that's what we want. Don't get that airy fairy cake with the frosting on. Get down to the guts of the cake. The frosting will come when you start living and putting together all the ingredients of truth. The frosting will come. Don't slap on the frosting on the cake. Am I making sense? In other words, don't just hide behind truth. Be a parrot of truth. Do not be taking other people's inventory. Don't give them your advice unless they want it. Okay? Yeah. Do you want to be healed? That's what Jesus would say. Do you want to be healed? He asked them first. Do you want to change? You don't want to change. Hey, how's that working for you? That's what Dr. Phil says. I love that statement. How's it working for you, Patty? It's not working at all. We are incredible spiritual beings. And we can be brighter with our lights the more that we move that darkness out, those weeds out, those erroneous thought patterns. That's releasing and letting go. If it's not working for you, why are you holding on to it? I love it when, you know, churches have garage sales and people bring their broken crap, excuse the expression, I'm sorry, to the church, like a broken phone. Come on, folks, throw it out. Get over it. Nobody wants your broken phone. Recycle it. Am I right? Come on. So, you know, Jesus also talked about right judgment. And oh, and everybody goes, I'm not, good. I'm not judging. I'm not, I judge all the time. And so do you. Judgment is one of our 12 faculties, spiritual powers. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> so we have to have righteous judgment so what is righteous judgment it's right thinking you know we have to go beyond the appearance of things and know that god is at work that's the best way for me to explain this lesson <laughs> you know that there is so much more happening in the invisible realm than we will ever know in my, house, in my father's house are many rooms. How many rooms are in this one church right now that God has? Yeah. Yeah. What about the, in the invisible realm? Come on, folks, let's wake up. We're not just dealing with the physical. We got to get that in our noggin. We're dealing with the invisible realm. If you're in the room of a dying person, as much as I am, you know, you just know. There is life after death and there are many rooms in that one room. It's ascension time for that person. Yes, the ones left behind, we hurt and we're going to miss that person. And then we got dumb people that come up to us. I'm sorry, that's a judgment. That's a judgment I should not be. Okay, people who don't know better will come up and say, well, they're in such a better place. And you just want to smack them, right? You just, you, the better place would be right here, right now with me. I don't care that they're with God. So do not say that to somebody who's grieving. Oh, God must have had special plans. Leave God. Go up to the person, hug them, and just say, you know what? I have no words, but I'll keep you in my prayers. We cannot, we don't have any words that would take away the pain or the hurt of someone that is experiencing grief. 
And grief just doesn't come with death. It's about losing jobs, about people giving up their houses, your children moving off to college. And believe me, I still stomp my feet over that one. I do not like it that she's in Minnesota and I'm here. I, I don't like it. So you see, you all know, I mean, it's human stuff, isn't it? But you know what I do when those thoughts come? I say the prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds her, the love of God enfolds her, the power of God protects her, and the presence of God watches over her. You know, wherever she is, God is. Who am I saying the prayer for? Her or me? Both. Both. Yeah. That's how I get let go. Or the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference today, now, yesterday, you know? Because I'm in, I have, I'm not going to say I am impatient. I am not impatient. I am very patient. God is teaching me patience all the time. And you know how he's teaching me patience? He makes me wait on some things. It's good. You know, you practice. You have to practice this. I don't have it all together, folks. You know, I, I don't. I know the truth. I know the unity principles. But I have to work them every single day, just like you. You know, in order to keep my recovery going, I have to practice my 12 steps. I have to remind myself that sometimes I'm powerless over people, places, and things. Yeah. The only person I have control over is me and my thoughts. And remember, everything began in the mind of God and then took on form. Make yourself open, receptive, responsive, and obedient to the divine guidance of God every single day. If you don't know what to pray, pray that. I am open, receptive, responsive, and obedient to God's divine guidance and direction. The spirit of truth goes before me and makes my way easy, joyous, successful, productive, and prosperous in every way. Tell yourself how wealthy you are in life, not about how much you need money. If you start affirming how wealthy you are and you're open to the wealth of God, watch what pours in. Just keep saying it, keep saying it, and you will see it becomes a part of your consciousness. That's part of the God consciousness. That's what we want. Release what's not working. Affirm the truth that's going to set you free. In affirmations, brings into the light where we, where we created the vacuum of releasing and letting go of what's not working for us, the shadow parts of us or of our thinking. Do righteous judgment. Get right thinking with yourself and life. It's a journey, it's not a destination. So we got a long way to go. As I said, I never got this pretty overnight and I got a lot more pretty to go, a lot more. It's endless. It's endless because I am God. You are God. You are God expressing. Don't forget that. So what? why don't we take a moment and just go within. And I want for you to follow that breath of God as you breathe it in and exhale it out. Breathe in the light, exhale out the darkness. Let it go. Whatever it is that is heavy upon your mind, heart, and soul. Let it go. Just let it go. Breathe it out. Ask God to take it from you. And then just ask God, 
God, fill me with your light. Make it bright. Make me brighter. May my light shine brighter, dear God. I am your light. Affirm, I am your light, God. Now I want you to affirm, I am the Christ. I am truly the Christ expressing. I am the Christ. Feel it. Be it. I am the loving Christ. I am the Christ of love and wisdom. Be still and know that I am God. Remember the words. I am is your spiritual nature. It's your creative force within you. What is it that you want to create today in the name and through the power of the Christ that you are? And I'll just say thank you, God, for answered prayer. Thank you, God, for answered prayer. So it is. Amen. Thank you. Wonderful message. And as we move forward and present our tithes and offerings, folks, a moment to bring them out. Again, there are two envelopes in the pews. One, the bluish, purplish one, the print is for the regular offerings, and the red is for our special projects that include our parking lot the seal that they do have to look at on a roof I we have to admit that that's there at the moment and that that will be easily fixed as well and anything else that we need to do here to keep us a thriving community and as we do so I invite you to join in the offering prayer there is no lack or limitation freely I give and freely I receive from God's abundance I am blessed as I give, and unity is blessed in receiving. And we invite Sherry up for a little more of her wonderful music. I am a poor with a stranger while journeying through this world of war. 
Yet there's no sickness, soil of danger in that bright land to which I go. I'm going to see the Father. I'm only going over Jordan. I'm only going, going over home. I know dark clouds will gather on me. I know my way is rough and steep. Yeah, beautiful peace, lie just before me, in God's redeeming, their vigils keep. I'm going to see, going on. Over Jordan, only going, going on, going to see my dog, going no going over Jordan. I'm only going I want to wear the crown of glory when I get home that good land. I want to shout out salvation story. Counselor with I'm only going over Jordan, only going over I am a fool, a stranger, but journey in this world of There's no sickness, no danger in that bright land to which I go. Go with me. To see my God. I'm only over Jordan. Only going. I'm only going over. Only Oh, okay. Well, you guys are so powerful. I know that you've already blessed. This money, these gifts are blessed because you've been blessed by the church and you gave because you were blessed by the church and by the energy here and by the words that were spoken today by the community and that. So I just ask the infinite spirit of love, life and wisdom to bless each and every one of you. God knows your mind, your heart, your soul and who you are. God is very personal to each and every one of you. 
Your job this week and every day of your life is to build your relationship with the divine within you and all around you. When you have no words, just say, I behold the divine and I behold the divine Christ in and each and every one of you. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Okay, now we get the serious stuff. <laughs> Announcements, that's right. Oh, uh, next week. Ah, oh, we were talking about this. We get Sandy Krause next week. Yay, on the message of spiritual and scientific. Hmm, should be interesting. And all of our speakers are interesting. Don't we have great speakers here, folks, every Sunday? This is just so amazing, you know? I, I know we we're looking for a main minister, but you know, I like this variety. Anyway, so uh, what's the next thing we get to talk about? Uh, the book study, Return to Love. They're still doing that. No, they're just starting that one. Uh, Marianne Williamson. Uh, Thursdays, 930 in person or virtual. Make sure you uh, let Kevin know if you want to do it virtually or show up here a little before 930 and come join the the circle and following that we have the silent unity prayer service at about 11 o'clock that's all about 15 minutes again virtual or on um, uh here if you can't do either of those stop for just a moment thank god for where you are who you are and who you're the situations you're in and keep moving forward our discussions groups of course in miracles at 11 45 with joanne bauman our life journey groups the second and fourth monday at 6 30 led by kevin uh those keep going on every week uh, of course our website has got lots of wonderful information just stop by and see what we've got every once in a while something new pops up you know and keep that on the top of the search engines so that, uh, you know, when somebody's looking for a wonderful spiritual community, they land on us. Uh, volunteers always needed. Talk to Diane. She'll find something for you. Uh, I see a few of the pews need some pens and paper and things in them. I bet you somebody has a few minutes. She can give you the supplies and that can get taken care of. Um, anything else? Kitchen, uh, helping out with all that stuff. How to be happy um our own i am i mess up the name and i apologize rinpoche um has got a couple of online seminars for us to join if we'd like how to be happy on the 14th 15th and 16th i think it's about a 25 dollar donation for each one of those um you can go check out your weekly e-blast if you don't get that consider signing up for it and you'll get all the information this information too in your in your email box so you can review it Okay. Yeah. But it, it was in the e-blast too, which is cool. So with the link. So that was great. Uh, one of our best fun times of the year, our potluck and bake sale. Uh, it's going to be part of, uh, it's going to follow our annual meeting on April 30th. If you are a member showing up here, please renew your membership. We need to do that every year to be able to vote. Uh, those that uh, are new here, and if you'd like to vote at that meeting, uh, please, again, register with the office online, make a phone call, all that fun. You can find some way to do it. Even those that are virtual are welcome, you know, to be a part of this because you're part of our community. And uh, they're probably going to be a membership meeting between now and then if if you don't know about the 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 process and the unity principles and things like that. Just let Kevin know about that. Uh, we have a picture contest. Miss Susan has set that up for us. Bring in a picture from before you were, what was it, 10 years old? Yeah, I don't know if I got any of those, but <laughs> I think there's a reason for that. <laughs> Mom and dad have them all. But if we can find some, you know, find some pictures, drop it in the in the little envelope outside on the, by the bulletin board, put your name on it lightly on the back. You know, you don't mess up your picture. And uh, I believe it's those those that get the most right. Is that correct? Get uh, for that twenty five dollar gift card. That just you know, can't just get one right, so you can't get yours uh, <laughs> and get that gift card. That won't work. There's only one gift card we're giving away. So uh, you know, we'll be setting that up. And again, potluck and games next week. Lucky you, I'll be somewhere else. Uh, 
so I can't, we can't, you know, our reign of, of winners for Pictionary, somebody else is going to have to take it over. It's a team that won last time can't do it this time, and that's okay with Kevin jo and Joanne. Um, so someone can do it, bring some friends, dish to share. You know, it's a great time to share our community with somebody when they get to have a little bit of fun afterwards. Any other announcements that were not in the list that we need to worry about? Okay. I can read it. That means I need my glasses. There's another one. Yeah. Okay. Joanne's 77th birthday today. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. Look at this. And it says you're you're invited to help Joanne celebrate her 77th birthday. So join for sandwiches and cakes in the lobby after the service today. All right. So all that fellowship, happy you know, birthday. to you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you, Joanne. Happy birthday to you. And there's one more that we there's one more that we usually do, which is our prayer for protection. And the light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. And the presence of God watches over you. Wherever you are, God is. And all is well. Amen. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you for the invitation. And glad we're continuing on that. And then... All right, with all of our fun, we also have the peace. And so if you'd stand, please, uh, those that would like to join the circle, go right ahead. Those that it finds easier to say in your pew, go right ahead and do that too. We got those good options. And join in our peace song. Let's see how we can do this. I usually do risks, but I'll do it. Let's see what sounds good. Give it to yeah. Sandra's here. If you can give it to Diane. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to say hi to Sherry, but I'll, I'll say hi to you. To her. <laughs> I'll do that and then I'll move out of the way. Okay. Good morning. Oh my God. Give the envelope to Diane's probably. Um, I can put it in the. I've got oh, okay. Yeah, right. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love both songs, but that first one. Oh my God. 
God. Oh, okay. Was that um, Winona Jeff? Yeah. Oh, I've never, I've never heard that song before. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, okay. And of course, you just got the most perfect voice in the world. Mm -hmm. You do. You smell good. Oh, thanks. Mm. A little spray of cologne. So, yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really good. Thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Doing really good. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know you were a nurse. I'm retired. How did you yeah. just find that out? No, I forgot to tell you last time because um, uh, I think it was like a conversation I had with Cindy or somebody, oh, and you know, I I was online. Oh yeah, just kind of slid off a chair. Yeah, yeah. And so, anyway, she was like, "Don't worry." You are too <laughs> I was a nurse, and yeah. what kind of nurse? Well, I, you know, I was a nurse for a long time, so I did critical care nursing to start. Got into oncology. Towards the end, I did hospice nursing, and like she said, that's where it gets so real. And then I also did some teaching. So nursing is just a wonderful. Feel because yeah. there's so 